everybody, it's me, Katiosaurus. Welcome back to my channel. One of the hardest parts about having ADHD is knowing where to put your stuff. More specifically, where to put your stuff in a way that makes sense for you, so the next time you have to put your stuff away, you have a place to put the stuff in a place that is away. You know what I mean? One of my biggest frustrations when it comes to me and my ADHD and my struggles with executive function and organizing stuff is my pantry. Let's take a tour. Oh, it's terrible. It's so bad, it's so terrible. What is all this stuff? I don't even know. I don't even, what, why is it like that? Why is it like that? I don't know, it just, it just happens. It just happens. It just happens all the time. It's very frustrating. So anyway, welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to my pantry. And today we're gonna organize it and we're gonna talk about it while we do it. However, before we do that, I need to go get some supplies. So I'm gonna put you here. No. I'm gonna put you, oh God, I didn't think about this. I'm gonna put you here. I'm gonna put you here and I'll be right back. I may have slightly overbought. Okay, so before we get all the new organizational stuff out of the box, we're not gonna make two messes. We need to make one mess and then put that mess away, right? Because what happens when you're like, I'm gonna sort all my laundry by putting it on the bed in a big pile is then you sleep in laundry that night. That's just, that's just how that works. So we're not gonna do that. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort things in the pantry, and then we're gonna decide what sort of container we wanna put them in. Now some of you might be going, Katie, isn't this just the home edit? Kind of, but yes, but no, but a little bit. So here's the thing. So actually the reason why I wanted to make this video was because we started watching the home edit on Netflix. And I got, I just, I found myself getting so frustrated with, with how they make organizational systems because it seems like there's always like a lot of work, right? There's always like a lot of after or before preparation that need to happen. And I started thinking, okay, I like the idea of having categories, right? I like the idea of having my stuff in containers where I can see it. Hello, Bales. I like all of those ideas, but what I don't like is setting up a system that is not gonna be practical or sustainable for me, right? Because if I have to spend a lot of like spoons and mental energy, like prepping every time I go to the grocery store, I feel like I'm not gonna want to go to the grocery store. And so a lot of this is just kind of a big experiment to see what's gonna work for me. But I've thought a lot about kind of like how we live and what we need. And so we're gonna take that information, also take the information that I have about how my own executive dysfunction works, and we're gonna build something new. So you can do that too at home. There's no rules, all right? So uh, first we're gonna take everything out of the pantry. Ready, set, hyperlapse. <laughs> Kind of. You might have noticed I didn't take that stuff or the door stuff. And that's okay. We're gonna deal with that later. That's all my like plastic wrap and that kind of thing. And so that's not food. So today we're dealing with food, right? So we're gonna categorize. Um, so okay, so here's the thing about all of this. The reason why I wanted to do this is because one of the biggest struggles that I have with this pantry, someday I want to um, replace these shelves, but today is not that day. Today we're just gonna sort of get the storage situation under control. But the problem is, is that I can't see what I have a lot of the time. So what I wind up with is six things of peanut butter. And that's a lot of peanut butter. You don't need that much peanut butter. I mean, we might actually need that much peanut butter, but most people don't need that much peanut butter. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open these storage containers because I have a Fantasia, which means that I cannot picture stuff, which means doing things like this is really hard for me because I can't picture or visualize what it's gonna look like until it exists, which is, but you learn to live with it. And so one of the ways that I live with it is I just look at stuff a lot. So that's what we're gonna do. Hyperlap, just kidding. I'm just gonna take them out of the box. You don't need to watch them. All right, now what we're dealing with is an absolutely ridiculous amount of overpackaging. So, uh, that's fine. Actually, you know what? No, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna take an executive dysfunction de moment. So I don't know about you, but one of the most frustrating things for me is when I do a project like this, it begets smaller, other, more annoying projects. 
in particular, like ordering a bunch of storage containers means that now you have boxes for the storage containers and you have the wrappers that the storage containers come in. And that can be super frustrating because you're, you're making progress, right? You're getting the stuff done and now your kitchen is covered in boxes. So my mini tip for that is take care of those first. Break down the boxes. Even if you wind up needing to store some stuff, having that space clear to work is going to make your life a lot easier than trying to like walk around them every time you need something. I know it sucks, but like put on a little music, take a little box break, you will not regret. That sucked and I hated every minute of it, but the boxes are broken down and I timed it and it took me 47 seconds. I know it feels like it takes an eternity, but it literally took me less than a minute, so progress. Also, not that it matters super much, but the way that these are packaged is an actual war crime. So they have all the sizes mixed together and stacked in like weird and interesting ways. So to know what size anything is, you have to actually individually pull everything apart. And I do not love that for us, but that is the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And so we move on. That fucking sucked. All right. So, uh, also special thanks to my friend Joe who uh, helped me unpack these. I appreciate you and I love you. So here's what we got. We have a lot, right? We have like, you might be looking at that and we're like, bitch, that's not gonna fit in there. And you're right, it's not. Because the re what I did was I bought a bunch of extras. I went into this knowing I was gonna have a lot of extras because Eric's office needs to get organized. I wanna organize our tool closet. I wanna organize our junk drawer. So these are gonna be like multi-use things, right? This is not just for these one things. And also I got these on the cheap. I'm not gonna lie. These are not fancy container store. These are, I bought them off of Amazon. They were, I think $45 for a set of like 40 different pieces. And I did also have a $15 off coupon um, or coupon if you're a sociopath. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, that's what I use. So I should really think about what I want to say before I start recording. Okay, cool. All right. So this is kind of the real estate that we're working with right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start sort of pairing size to item. Like for example, we have a top, like a weird amount of pasta. So I'm going to figure out how much space the pasta is going to sort of take up if we put it into a bin and sort of use that as the sort of, my dog was excited about Use that as the buffer for sort of figuring out the sizes. I also didn't forget to say that I will be running a load in dishwasher before I start this. So please wash your containers. Don't die of weird diseases. Okay. I honestly don't know why this is the one that I've been looking forward to the most, but this is the spaghetti for the spaghetti height bin. So just because I know there's probably a lot of you who are going to get the same type of joy, it's going to ready, ready. Oh, look at it fit. Oh, look at him go. No, get out of here. And so then our first lid goes on, which I love for us. They're new, so they're a little stiff, but that's okay. And there you go. Also, speaking of lids, one thing that I was very, 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 very careful to do is I ordered uh, containers that all have the same lid. I don't know if you're like me, but I have just mystery lids and mystery covers uh, all over my kitchen. And it's something that I'm working on getting rid of. Um, but I find that to be deeply frustrating and it makes me not want to like store food because I have to spend time finding the right lid and it's just fucking obnoxious as shit. So I opted to preempt that and I got ones with matching lids. Not to spend a weird amount of time on matching lids and the importance of them, but this is a really good example of a system that you can create for yourself if you spend a little bit of time thinking about how you live and work in your kitchen. For me, I, I know that when I unload the dishwasher, I tend to throw stuff. I don't like pairing stuff up. I don't like taking time. And with my executive function and the way that my brain works, the only way that I am going to get these tasks done if it's, is if I make it efficient for myself. Similarly, you're going to see, I'm not going to put labels on these. I'm not going to put labels on these. Um, and the reason why is I know labels are sexy, right? I know labels are so sexy and maybe I'll, I'll do some experimenting with like a dry erase marker or something, but I don't want to be in the situation where, hey, I need a bin for the... I don't know, the, the other pasta, right? Um, but all I have is this bin that says spaghetti. My neurodivergent odd HD brain 
is gonna go, but it says spaghetti, you can't put another thing on, and then that's gonna, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work for me and my brain and what I need. So the reason why I got clear containers was because I wanted to be able to see how much of everything I have. But what I'm really focused on doing is making sure that I'm not making extra work for myself on the back end. And for me, that looked a lot like matching lids and not worrying about labels because I'll be able to see what's inside. Your results may vary. It's okay if you really need labels to, to keep you to a strict system. This is my first time trying anything like this. This is my first time really sitting down and really thinking about my needs and what I want. And so I'm really excited, but it's also going to be a system in flux for a while. I'm gonna figure out what works and what doesn't work. And I'm, I'm expecting that, right? A big part of doing this kind of thing around your home is not allowing things that don't work to be failures because they're not failures, right? If I do this for a few months and I realize that the bins are never getting refilled and it actually makes more sense for me to, you know, like put the boxes of pasta in a bigger box or something, that's totally fine. I haven't failed at storing my food. I haven't messed up. I haven't done anything wrong. I have gathered more information about the way that I actually live and how systems can be functional. And I think that's super, super, super important to keep in mind when you're doing stuff like this, because it can be so easy to be like, it has to be absolutely perfect on the first try, or I failed and I've wasted my money and I've wasted my time. And that's not true. You're getting information. So I'm gonna go get some more information about what else is gonna fit in this pantry. Okay, see you in a minute. Smash cut! <laughs> I laugh because I have not another tear to shed. Okay, so we have immediately run into a problem that frankly I should have saw coming, um, but I, I just have a heart full of hope and dreams and I was like, nah, it'll be fine. This doesn't fit. So I have decided my my ADHD brain right now is screaming that what I should do is do the project that I originally wanted to do, which is pull down the shelves, build new shelves, space them out differently, and do all that. But I'm looking around and I'm I'm seeing the absolute fucking mess that I've made. And I'm realizing that it is going to make more sense for me to have a functional cleared off kitchen. And once I know where this stuff kind of needs to go, that's actually gonna give me more information about maybe the shelves that I need to build. So it hurts my very soul, but we're gonna just sort of click him in there and that's gonna be fine for right now. Um, information, not failure. Okay, so this is another one of those like weird aphantasia things, but I wanted to actually show you. So these containers, I love these containers because they're sort of self-contained, but we usually go through a lot of orzo. So one of the things that I think is important to keep in mind when you're deciding on containers, the, that was like most of the lids. <laughs> but one of the things to keep in mind is uh, just, are your containers space efficient? And this much space for these or even, you know, like that's like a matches, but even that much space is still a lot less than that amount of space, right? So we can combine and we can consolidate in ways that both scratch our little brains, um, but also make our spaces more efficient, so. Okay, so that was all three containers and it fit uh, into this much space, which honestly, I was kind of surprised. I didn't, I, again, I have a fantasia. I cannot fucking visualize how things are going to fit in things until I put them into the things. And so I know a big part of this process for me is going to be like, putting noodles into different bins over and over and over again. And that's okay, because once again, we're getting information. But now I know that I can comfortably store at a time four of these of Orzos in this amount of space. And that's fucking rad to know. So I'm stoked about this, but onward and upward with the process. Here we go. Oh, this is another thing I forgot to say. Um, but so if you have people in your family, like these are um, chickpea uh, uh, noodles because we have uh, friends with a gluten allergy. So we like to have stuff in the house that they can eat when they come over. Um, but we also have like regular, right? So one thing that you can do, um, you know, if you are a person with food allergies or you keep kosher in your house, something like that, is you can get lids with different colors. Again, I'm choosing not to, so I'm, I'm just gonna mark this one with like, you know, an X or something so they don't get mixed up. Um, but if that's a thing where you like have to worry about that a lot, um, you know, you might think about doing extra lids or like wrapping a certain color of tape around the container or something like that. All right, I once again find myself with a neurodivergent challenge, which is that this is the amount of 
swirly turlies that's the uh, scientific name um, of these that fit in this container but I have more I have more of them um, and so I think see now I'm like I, the, my struggle is I really wanted to use these containers for pasta but I think knowing if I'm being honest with myself if I'm being honest about the amount of pasta that we consume in this house and how much I like this specific shape because it pleaseth my neurodivergency um, I'm gonna use a different shape bin uh, because it's either use two of these which I don't mind or I can use one big one so I think we're gonna do that but I'm gonna wax and wane on it for a little bit so it's, again you can you you're an adult you get to decide that's a reasonable amount of swirly twirlies I feel like this is interesting so I could probably put this here and I'll probably wind up doing that, but like this does fit in front, okay? But then here's the thing, if I want to make spaghetti, not swirly twirlies, now I have to take this probably out, then I have to come move, right? So one of the things that I'm genuinely really thinking about when I'm sort of like figuring out where to put these is does that make the most sense or does it make more sense to keep them like that? and maybe have like narrower shelves. That's actually really what I'm thinking is when I wind up replacing these shelves, make them about that much, however that much is, make them that much shorter so those just fit on and then maybe do like an L here so I can get some more storage or something. But again, we're thinking about the function of the space. I'm just gonna keep yelling that to get used to it. Okay, this time similar thing, but backwards where um, this is a really big container for a very small amount of couscous. Um, but couscous is another thing that I love to make. It's genuinely one of my favorite foods. I love to cook it. It's very versatile. You can make it with anything. The ADHD cooking show will be coming up next. Um, but I'm gonna use one of these big containers because I know that we tend to stock up on couscous. And so having it here in storage is gonna be super handy because then that way I go, oh, we're getting low on couscous. I should replace it. So there you go. Okay, so now we are deviating from containers. Um, and going to bins. Uh, also, just free neurodivergent tip. If you are a neurodivergent person who struggles with like meals and meal prep and you're like, I'm not hungry and I don't know what I want to eat. I love these. I get all different brands, so I, I'm not like loyal. Um, but they're those like bags of rice. You put them in the microwave for like a minute and they're super nice because you put them in the microwave for a minute. You just tear off the top, you put them in and then like you have a like a hot meal, right? I mean, it's just rice, but you can, like throw shit on top of it. But I really like to do that because sometimes it's just the overwhelm of like thinking of something to cook. Um, so that shit is great. Hey, come here. We're going to have a hard conversation. So something that is uh, very true of many neurodiverse people, especially autistic and or ADHD people, um, is we love sugar. We love sugar. But also, uh, problem that many people with ADHD have uh, is struggling with binge eating, um, especially when it comes to sugary food. Um, and my husband and me, um, we love candy. Candy is amazing and we're adults and we can spend our adult money to buy as much adult candy as we want and that's very cool. Except uh, something that happens quite a lot is it results in me sitting down and going, oh, I'm going to eat like, you know, just one and then I've eaten an entire bag of Reese's Pieces and then I'm sad. So something that you can do um, to sort of combat that is, is I'm, I'm a really big supporter of there's no such thing as good foods or bad foods. Like there's, there's just not. Um, and ADHD people especially tend to struggle more with eating disorders than the non-ADHD population. And so I think getting into the whole good food, bad food mindset can be really not healthy for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. So having things you like around like candy is totally fine, but just a really simple thing that you can do to sort of like curb binging is put a goddamn lid on it. Uh, similarly, I have a weird amount of fudge rounds because I love fudge rounds. Um, but I'm not going to put them in a grab bin. I'm going to put them in a lidded bin because that means that every single time I go into the bin, I'm thinking about, I'm opening the lid, I'm taking one out. I'm not just grabbing five and going, ha ha ha, and then running off with my thing. So that may or may not work for you, but as somebody who has struggled with bulimia and has been in eating disorder, in and out of re uh, eating disorder recovery for a long time, that is a helpful trip that I have. All right, so this is where we are. Is it better than it was before? I'm gonna be really honest. 
I don't know if I love this. Um, and I think that is an important part of the process to talk about. I feel like when you watch home edit shows, you know, fancy whatevers, there's like this idea that the, the you know this thing happens and then it's amazing and then your life and your, all your problems are solved. This has solved a few problems. I will that that is true. But it has also uh, created some problems. I still have to deal with the stuff on the door, which is going to be a project for a different day. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not happy. I mean, just chemically. But also, I'm not... It's not what I wanted, but I don't know what I want, and that's part of this, the frustrating part of this process, and that's why I want to be, like, transparent about this process. Because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I thought I wanted bins, but the bins take up a lot of space. I don't need a bin for everything. I'm not gonna be one of those Instagram people who puts, like, the chips in a bin. That's silly. I think I'm, I'm not going back to the drawing board. Like, this isn't, again, it's not a failure. It's information, which I'm passionately telling myself right now. But I think I am gonna kind of go back and, and maybe figure out, like, what sp specifically do I not like. And also, if you have ideas, let me know in the comments. You know, let me- you can shoot me links and stuff to, to cool things if you have uh, good ideas. This type of thing is a journey. It is a process. Uh, getting your space under control with ADHD can always be a challenge. Um, and even people like me who talk about ADHD on the internet struggle. Um, so if you are also struggling with your pantry, I see you and you are not alone. Um, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, surprise! New video! So I'm gonna be doing more stuff like this. Um, I'm just sort of, I'm not saying easing back into content, but I'm really trying to focus on content that excites me and is stuff that I can sort of like make as I go. And this is a great project because getting to the end of this video is what kept me finishing this project, so thank you for body doubling with me. A couple of announcements. One, if you're gonna be at Dragon Con in Atlanta, I have a whole bunch of panels, so you should come to them um, if you're watching this this week. Uh, I will also be at Big Bad Con in San Francisco if you wanna check that out. I will also be at D3 at Sea running some games. There are still times to get your tickets. So you can do that if you want. Um, don't forget that I have a podcast. It's called Katie and Eric's Infinite Quest. Uh, I also have a Schmoly Uh The money uh, that I make is how I support myself. So if you want to support me and the work that I do and want some, you know, spicy content, uh, go over there. Um, and if not, and you're like, man, I want to support you, but I don't like spicy content, you can also go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash katieasaurus. And that's all that I can think of because my brain is fried and I'm trying really hard not to cry. Um, but so anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, I'm just, it's okay. Grab a fruit snack on the way out, bye. I was trying to hit the camera, but now I'm... All right, I just wanted a quick update before the very end of the video. Uh, so I took some time to think about what I did and did not like, uh, and it was kind of weird, um, but one of the things that I realized is I didn't like the shape. I'm neurodivergent, get off my dick. Um, so I actually swapped a lot of the containers for squares rather than the tall boys. I also turned most of them onto their side, which for now gave a lot more storage space and actually like made it a little bit more easy because I'm a small, I'm a small boy. I can't reach the top shelf. I'm small. Everybody thinks I'm tall. I'm not. Um, and so yeah, so I did that. Um, and so yeah, it's not perfect again, but I feel slightly better than I did five minutes ago. So. Sometimes it's just about figuring out what scratches your little brain brain. But anyway, I'll keep you updated. Okay, bye. I was going to do a thumbs up, but then I forgot how. Okay, bye. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know it was my timing spot. I'm making a grilled cheese. It's <laughs> not right off. You can't eat out of the containers. I'm sorry. Um, get yourself a pirate who comes over to help you with hard projects.